Have you ever picked up aromatherapy book and as you're reading it, you start becoming very confused? Because some books will say, hey, you never want to use essential oils topically on your body. And heaven forbid if you were to ingest an essential oil. And pretty soon as you continue to read and more books you read, the more confused you become until you wind up in a state of paralysis. I don't dare use an essential oil because this book says if I use it, I could die. We want to spend some time tonight to educate you on the true application of essential oils, on how you can do what we refer to as the integrated use of essential oils. You see, there are three schools of thought when it comes to essential oils. There is a German olfaction, the French medical, and the English massage and touch. Here in America, the German olfaction has been the real popular one. That's why you see aromatherapy schools popping up all over the place. True aromatherapy is through the olfaction. And so when you are trained in that aspect, you're kind of you know, prejudiced against the other two. And so it limits your ability to be able to use essential oils to their full extent. For example, if you had this amazing race car and you were just ready to get out and just see what it could do, but it only had first gear, <laughs> you're kind of not gonna go very fast and you're not gonna feel the whole experience of that race. But when you have second gear and third gear, wow, now you literally now have a machine that you can get the greatest satisfaction out of and the best opportunity. And that's what it is with essential oils and doing the integrated use of all three. There are times you'll want to use the French medical. There are times you'll want to use the English massage and touch. And there are times you'll want to use the germinal faction. You want to integrate them together and use them, and sometimes even simultaneously. And by doing so, you'll get the greatest benefit of the essential oils. Instead of limiting yourself to a single aspect, you get the full robustness of what essential oils have to offer in the form of prevention. So as we go through this tonight to help you understand the power of true application of the integrated use, and tying that to the 10 body systems so that we can actually do true prevention. That's going to give you the power and the robustness of the essential oils. So let's roll up our sleeves and jump into the world of the application of essential oils to the human body. Now, I am really, really excited about this whole thing about prevention because our whole message is that we need to live a lifestyle of prevention, not a reckless lifestyle, because we are a product of our environments. We literally now today are living in such a toxic environment that everywhere around us, we're being bombarded by things that can create challenges within our, our body. And we even know through statistics from the Centers of Disease Control and other uh, regulatory agencies, that by the end of this year, they estimate 140 million Americans will suffer from some form of chronic illness. That's staggering. It's absolutely staggering. And why is that so? It's because that our healthcare industry is so focused on curing disease, treating disease, not preventing or mitigating its onset. That's where their real focus is. And so, in understanding the integrated use of essential oils, you can be doing all three at the very same time, creating the most power. And to do that, we really need to ask ourselves these questions, or maybe you've already asked yourself these questions. How, how do I do it topically or aromatically or internally? How much do I dilute and what do I dilute with? And how often do I use it? And where do I put it? Do I put it behind my ear? Or do I put it on my big toe? Or do I put it on my throat? Well, where do I put it? These, all these kind of questions you've probably had one time or another in your life. I know I did. When I was first introduced to essential oils, I remember how overwhelming it was. It was almost like, holy cow, this is, this is two elephants. How do I really use this monster of a product. Guys, let me assure you tonight, it's not a monster. Let me assure you that it is as simple as a few steps. Once you understand the integrated use, the three aspects, 
of using the essential oils, you will literally, truly, for the first time in your life, have true power in your hands to create change within your body. And this is a good change, a change that will bring you health and vitality. I know that to be true because I have lived the essential oil lifestyle for the past 19 years. You don't need to have a cold. You don't need to have the flu. These are things that you create, you don't catch. When the body fulfills the requirements of that cold or that flu, it will manifest. And by using the integrated use of essential oils, you prevent that from happening. That's why it's so powerful. So let's look at these here three schools of thought and really come to understand them and realize how powerful they are individually, but how magnificent they are when combined, understood, and used simultaneously for your health benefits. That's why I get so passionate about what we're sharing with you. So looking at the French medical, it's absolutely amazing. You know, and I've had the opportunity to travel to France and work with Dr. Daniel Penuel, a 35-year medical doctor using essential oils exclusively in his medical practice. Worked with Dr. Pierre Francom. I have seen some amazing things happen. I have literally witnessed leaders in the field in France using the essential oils and prescribing them in their medical practice. Literally writing out a prescription, taking it to a pharmacy, and the pharmacy actually fulfilling that prescription by diluting the essential oils together and making a synergy, giving it to them with a capsule to take it internally. I have witnessed this multiple times. In fact, they even allow the prescription and use of essential oils to be covered by their insurance in France. It's absolutely amazing. I remember one time Dr. Penwell ran a splinter through his hand. I mean, it went in down here and came up out by his finger and it became infected. And so he went to his colleagues, doctors, and they wanted to fillet his hand open, lay it open, dig the infection out, and sew it back up. And I remember, I, I was so intrigued, because I wanted to see, did he really believe in essential oils, or was he going to cave in and do <clears throat> the standard treatment? And you know, it was kind of amazing watching him uh, wrestle through this that time while I was there with him. And he actually took the essential oil in an eyedropper, put it in the open hole where the puncher went in, and just kept putting the oil in until it oozed out the top. And I literally, within the two weeks I was there, watched that hand heal completely. Absolutely amazing. No scars, total function, infection gone. That's the power of essential oils when used correctly. And now in France, they're actually teaching medical aromatherapy in their colleges and universities. It's, it's amazing because they have not gone away from it. And so when we look at the French medical, we really start to see that this has a very long legacy. It's a very powerful modality. And if you want to look at it kind of like I do, if you picture a, a, a spearhead with a shaft, the tip of the spearhead, in my opinion, is the French medical, the most precise. We're going to go get a blend to take care of this problem. Oh, you have this problem? Well, let's go make this blend to take care of that problem. Or you need this essential oil and this essential oil and this essential oil to take care of this problem. Very pinpointed. And then the arrowhead or the spearhead has to attach to the shaft. Right where it attaches to the shaft would be your uh, English massage and touch and then the entire length of the shaft would be your German olfaction. Now you have a spear of prevention in your arm. Boom. You can really create some amazing benefits. So that's how I kind of look at these three together in combination. When you have them all integrated together in one single use, power. You have power in your hands. They literally treat a lot of infections in France. Um, and a lot of these, you know, when you start looking at reproductive organs, well, how do we get to a reproductive organ? Well, sometimes there's going to have to be an internal use here or there. So there's different ways that you can do this, but that is, is so powerful when you're looking at the French medical. When we look at the germinal faction, another very powerful way to use the essential oils. 
You, and let me help you understand just briefly when we talk olfaction, this is what is called the true aromatherapy. This is where they will diffuse the oil into the air. <clears throat> they will put it on a cotton ball and smell it. They will just open the bottle and smell it, or they'll put it in a necklace diffuser, or they'll put it in a humidifier. It's all through the aspect of the essential oils literally floating in the air and coming into your body. Because of the olfaction area being so powerful in your uh, brain and the limbic system, it creates a lot of changes. And in many different researches that have been done around the world, <clears throat> they have found that it will actually lower the uh, need for depression medication. And it will lower anxiety in a hospital situation or a dentist situation just by smelling the essential oil. And many times, I, I, just, I just love going to Walmart, <clears throat> sitting down where they have the blood pressure cuff machine, take your blood pressure and your heart rate, and then take peppermint and smell it. Do it again and see how it changes. Then take lavender and smell it. Take it again, see how it changes. Literally just from doing aromatherapy, you can literally affect your body in a very powerful way. So think about this for just a minute. <clears throat> Here you are in the middle of the cold and flu season. Well, which method were you going to use? Use the germinal faction. Put the diffuser by the bed, turn on the timer. Guess what? You're preventing while you sleep. Isn't that amazing? So here you can do that and in the morning. You get up and you do your <clears throat> toiletries and everything that you do, your showering and whatnot, and you put the essential oils on. You're using the next method. Again, integrating the three schools of thought. Now, you've probably noticed here in America that there's been a lot of aromatherapy courses offered and schools set up. And this is their focus. And when you focus just on one, sometimes you become biased towards the other trains of thought. And, and so because that focus is so predominantly strong here in America, you will run across people that will really be opposed to the other forms. But don't think for a minute that one is better than the other. They are great in each aspect, but when combined together, the power is beyond. It is greater than the sum of the individual parts. Now, here's what's so amazing when we're looking at the olfaction. As it's coming into your nose, right here, the bridge of your nose, you have olfactory neurons that stick right down through the, the tissue, and they just kind of stick out into the cavity there. And as a molecule from the essential oil is floating through the air, comes in your nose, it's going to vibrate that olfactory neuron. And it'll vibrate at the frequency of that essential oil. And that's going to send a message directly right back to the brain, to the olfactory bulb, to the amygdala, the pituitary, the hippocampus, the hy uh, hypothalamus, and instantly you start seeing a change within your body. The thing that's so amazing about this is that Frequency and that aroma that is attached there is what gives your brain identifies because of a learning situation. It is attached to emotion, it's attached to memory, and it learns what that um, vibrate, vibratory rate is, and it will identify it. And so the next time you smell it, guess what? Boom, you've got that. See, out of your five senses, you got your sight, your hearing, your touch, your taste, and your smell. Out of the five senses, the sense of smell is the most powerful of the five. You can literally go on a mental vacation just by smelling something. Do you remember the first time you uh, smelled a campfire? Guess what? Next time you smell a campfire, boom, it takes you right back to wherever you had a good experience with a campfire. For example, as a child, my father would take us into the back country of Idaho, and there was natural hot water there. And along the hot water was uh, peppermint, wild peppermint growing. And I remember as just a very young child, he would pick that peppermint and he'd make a tea. And so now when I am walking in the mountains and I come across some wild peppermint, and it's usually by a stream, instantly I literally go back and relive many memories of my childhood because that aroma 
is attached to an emotional learning memory, it is the most powerful of all of the senses. So when you're using essential oils, attach that to a learning experience and everything is going to start changing in your body because it's linked to these specific pathways. Absolutely powerful. Now the third school of thought here that helps us to really understand the essential oils is the English massage and touch. This is absolutely a phenomenal one um, and cannot be discounted. And sometimes when we're dealing with the English massage and touch, they get very uh, excited about saying, oh, you never put essential oils on neat, which means undiluted. You always will dilute it down to one or two percent. Well, here's the challenge that I personally have with this. Sometimes you do want to dilute an essential oil. For example, oregano. If you're to use oregano undiluted on your skin, it could be very um, alarming. It could be very hot. But, wow, will it take care of some challenges? Absolutely. Research shows that oregano diluted 1 to 50,000 will kill candida. This is research from Georgetown University. And so, yes, you dilute it down that low, it still kills candida. So if you have candida on your skin, it's going to kill it. If you're to put oregano on neat, undiluted, you're going to have a third degree burn. And so, yes, there's a time to dilute and there's a time to put it on neat. And this is part of the aspect that will help you understand when you do the integration of all three, to know which one is hot, which one is not, which one to dilute, and we will cover these items. Now, when you put essential oil on your skin, you gotta remember, it's gonna absorb through this semi-permeable barrier. It's semi-permeable to hold things out. Well, why does it allow essential oils in so easily? Because there's two requirements of your skin to allow the essential oils in. One, it has to be a low atomic mass unit weight, or an AMU, it has to be below 800 AMUs. Well, essential oils are around 150 to 300 is about the highest you're gonna find on essential oils. The other thing is it needs to be a lipid or a fatty acid because as the body actually works with bringing essential oils in, it's got to be able to break them down even smaller than they are to move them in and through the capillary to get it into the, the circulatory system so it can go throughout the entire body. And that's what's so amazing about the essential oils. And when you look at how they literally come into the body, right there where the sebaceous gland is, it's a little oil gland. And uh, that's why you'll have the, the little oily feeling on your face. Some of you ladies get really excited because in the summer when you start sweating, all of a sudden you get this shine. You have to go powder your face or wash your face to get the, the shine off because of the sebaceous gland push out this oil. Well, that oil also helps to emulsify or dissolve the essential oil into even smaller units so that it'll absorb into the capillaries, get into the blood vessels, into the bloodstream, and travel throughout your entire body. So really, when you stop and think about this, and we're looking at the integrated use of essential oils, when someone says, hey, you never want to use oils internally, it'll kill you. Well, let's stop and think about this. If I breathe it in, Where's it going? Internally. If I put it on my skin, where's it going? Into the bloodstream, internally. So why am I not dying? These are some of the things that sometimes people get kind of lost with. And when you start to really understand the truth and really understand the true training behind essential oils, it really starts to open up this whole new world of, wow, that makes sense. No matter what I'm doing, essential oils are going internally. So if I was to take and put a drop on the back of my hand and lick it off, like Spice for Life, is that gonna be a problem? Absolutely not, because if it was diffused in the air, guess what, you're gonna breathe it in, you put it on your skin, it's going inside, it's still inside. And so you're doing an internal application by diffusing it and by putting it on topically. So that's why we get really excited about putting all three together, because now you have the power of really going forward and making a super change and getting the full benefit of the essential oil when using the integrated use. Now let's talk about, just for a moment, the different ways that essential oils enter your body and where they go 
because it's very important that we understand this because this will help you once you understand how it comes into your body and how it's going to go in and target specific points and areas in your body, then the fear of the use and the application is diminished. And so basically, you have three ways that the essential oils enter your body. Uh, as a liquid, it can be oral or dermal. So it can go in your mouth or it can go topically on your skin, still going to go inside. And the third way is aromatically through the, the inhalation of the body. So let's break this down and help you understand it just a little, little more. Let's just take the one oral, okay? So if you were to do it uh, a, a couple ways, it, put the essential oils in your food, or you know, sometimes I like taking and putting uh, beef fit oil right in my water because it helps with food cravings and other challenges like that and with weight loss. Or you could do just a simple lick trick. If you're not familiar with the lick trick, that's where you put a little drop on the back of your hand and lick it off. Now, the reason I like the lick trick is because if you try to do this, <laughs> you might get four or five drops. If you do this, you know you can get one drop and then lick it off. You're not getting more than what you uh, want. So let's look at this. It goes to the mouth and then to the stomach and then to the small intestine and then to the large intestine. Okay, now it's really important that we look at this flow. If you kind of look at the chart over on the right-hand side, you'll notice that the small intestine, it kind of comes out of the small intestine and drops down into the bloodstream. I want to spend some time helping you understand the flow of this so you can really see the true power. If we take a look at the, at the, the small intestine, the stomach, the digestive area, because we're talking about oral application we start seeing uh, uh, some things happening. And we know that we get 90% absorption through our digestive system, really, of our food. That's what we'll, but where does that 90% happen? Well, let's look at the stomach. The stomach will, will absorb about 10%. That's all the stomach will do. Well, it's sitting there getting all broke down with all that stomach acids. We get about 10% absorption. When we get to the duodenum, it breaks down the proteins, the bile, and emulsifies the fats. Okay, let's stop and think about that. What is an essential oil? Essential oil is a protein. It is a fatty acid. What's responsible in the first section of the small intestine, the duodenum area? It breaks down proteins. Ah, essential oil. Bile. Well, it's not a bile, but it emulsifies fats, a fatty acid. So that's what an essential oil is. Well, when we get to the duodenum digestive area, it absorbs the sugars, the acids, the fatty acids. Oh, there's the essential oils into the bloodstream. So where do the essential oils absorb into the bloodstream? In the duodenum. That's where it goes in. And so the duodenum breaks it down further than the molecule that it is. And in the next section of the small intestine, boom, right into the bloodstream. And then when you get down to the ileum, it absorbs mainly vitamin B12, bile, the bile acid, so it gets it back in there. And any other remaining nutrients that did not get absorbed in the first two sections. Most all of your absorption, at least 90% of your absorption is going to happen in the first three sections of the small intestine. So bam, it's inside of the body doing the job that it needs to do. So that's why when you look at this, mouth, stomach, small intestine, bloodstream, just like that. Absolutely phenomenal. So let's look at the second way, dermal absorption. Here we go to the skin, the muscle tissue, and it kind of jumps around joint and goes over to the, the bloodstream there. The reason why is because there's not a lot of blood flow inside the joint. Here you have a specific fluid that is made more of cholesterol. Uh, and that is your, your grease or your uh, fluid that keeps the joints lubricated. And without that, the joints are dry and grind on each other and have a lot of pain. Well, essential oils literally go into the joint, and as it's being used, uh, that fluid is being cycled, and it'll come back out, and then it'll be reincorporated in the tissue, and it'll come back down to the bloodstream. And so there's not a direct path from joints back to the bloodstream. It has to come in the joint and back out, which makes it kind of... Um, uh, 
you know, one-way street, so to speak. Well, here's what's amazing when we're looking at the dermal. If we're living a good, healthy lifestyle and we're uh, using essential oils on a significant basis and using them on a consistent basis, we start really uh, helping the body to um, put off toxins and take on nutrients to help it to um, sustain and prevent. And studies have shown that the body, the skin overall, the whole organism, will absorb about 64%. So like your chest, your back, your legs, things like that will absorb about 64%. Not a lot of absorption there. But when you get down to the face, the feet, the hands, armpits, genitalia area, you get 100% absorption. And so here again, you can start really targeting and saying, okay, there's specific areas where we'd want to be using the essential oils so we get the most absorption and not as much flashing going off. And what's so amazing about this is, look at this, a study, and guys, I've got the research there on the bottom of the PowerPoint for you. Another peer-reviewed study shows that 100% absorption of fragrant ingredients. So that tells you right there that the essential oils are getting in, they are making their way to the bloodstream, they are impacting their life. And that's so powerful. So here we've done the French medical with the oral, showing the pathway of how it comes in to the bloodstream. Now we're showing the pathway of the English massage and touch. Where did it go? Same place, right to the bloodstream. Now let's take a look here at, at something that's very important. And that is inhalation. Where does it go? Nose, lungs, brain, hormones, neurochemical release, mental and emotional, okay? And you notice that's a pathway all the way down. But guys, there's a little line up there on nose and lungs. You see it going off to the left. What's that little line? If you look at the chart on the far right, right from the nose and the lungs, where does it go? Right down to the bloodstream. So no matter which way the essential oils come into your body, whether it comes in from the French medical, the German olfaction, or the English massage and touch, it's going to go to the exact same location, right to the bloodstream. Now, the thing that's so amazing about this, the lungs are phenomenal. They literally do things so well, even without you thinking about it. And they do it all the time, night and day. And if you look at the anatomy of the lungs, you'll notice that the left one is a little bit smaller. It has to make room for your heart. And, and look at how much uh, volume in a day that comes in and out of your lungs. So if you're doing true aromatherapy, here's what's amazing. That diffusion is coming and all these particles are going into the air and you're breathing in 10,000 quarts of air a day. And, and how big is your lungs? If you take the, the alveolas and they lay them out on the ground, the surface area of those little air sacs would be the same surface area as a tennis court. That's how much breathing capacity. So when you're diffusing, look at how much oil you're getting inside. And where's it going? Right to the bloodstream. Absolutely phenomenal how that literally goes in there to the bloodstream and affects the entire body. So really, guys, when you stop and look at it, is there a wrong way to use essential oils? Yeah, there is. Don't open the lid. <laughs> that's the problem. Get the lid off. That's the hardest thing about the application of essential oils. Get that stinking lid off. Whether you put it on your body, whether you put it on your tongue, whether you throw it in the air, it's going to go where? To the same location. It will find its way to the bloodstream, and then from the bloodstream, guess what it's going to do? It is going to go to where it is needed within your body. Now, that's why it's so important when you look at this. All three aspects, look at where it winds up, bloodstream. And then you can see how it goes from the bloodstream right on down, right on down, and how it's going to exit your body. It's going to go either come out through your skin, it's either going to come out through the urine, or it's going to come out through the feces. You see, that's the thing that's so powerful. When you look at your body, Anything that comes to it, whether it comes in the mouth or on the skin or in 
through your nose. Your body has three choices. Use it, get rid of it, or store it. And through this chart, you can see very simply that when you're using pure essential oils, that the body will take it in into the bloodstream and work it through wherever it needs to go and leave it, take it out of the body. Because once it gets to the, uh, the elimination stage, those essential oils typically are going to have toxins now attached to them, so they're going to be eliminated out of the body. They will pull toxins out of your body. That's the power. But if you're taking synthetic chemicals in your body, it's going to try to get rid of it or it's going to store it because it can't use synthetics. And if it starts storing those synthetics, now we have what? A toxic environment and we become a product of our environment. That's why understanding the integrated use of essential oils helps you to now get over the fear of how to use it. Because no matter how you're using it, it's going to impact your body in a very positive way. Now, there are times that you're going to want to use essential oils thermally only. For example, if you burned your hand, scalded it good. In fact, I, I did this just the other day, guys. You really can't even see. There's a little mark right here you can see. I <clears throat> had a horse on a rope, and it got spooked and took off. And I rope burned my hand. Clear across. I mean, it hurt like the dickens. As soon as I got the horse taken care of, this was Monday, this happened. I walked into the house and grabbed lavender and I did dermal application. Here is the key use the application by which we'll get to the problem the quickest. Would have, would have been beneficial for me to walk in and the diffuser's going and sit in the room and go, all right, I got the lavender diffuser, take care of my hand. No. How about if I was to do electric? All right, now it's got to go inside to the blood, all the way around. And come. No, put it right on location. Whatever is the quickest aspect to get it to location, that is the approach you use. And we're going to really help you understand this as we go through the 10 body systems. So, just remember that. Whatever will get the essential oil to the spot you need it to be the quickest is the method that you use, whether it's French, English, or German. Guess what? It just became simple. No, no more, oh, what do I do? How do I do it? It just made it simple. And that's why you can have so much power. So let's understand how we can use the essential oils to support the 10 body systems and why they are so important to help you to use the essential oils in your application process. I mean, look at how many cells there are in the human body. A hundred trillion. Some people say, well, I'm a little bigger, so mine's 200 trillion. Well, that's not. But guys, because we have so many cells, the essential oils will be in every single cell in your body in less than 20 minutes when used. Seriously, guys. That's what's so amazing. When we're looking at the human body, we have to remember that the human body is not parts and pieces. Well, it is. That's how the medical world looks at it. But we're really, truly, as Da Vinci illustrated here, a unitary system. We are, what happens to this thumb can affect this toe. It's all completely connected. And within this complete unitary system, we have body systems that function within there. And when we see that and we understand that and we realize that these body systems keep our body in what's called homostasis, a standing steady state, now we start understanding the true power of our body and how the essential oils can impact that. Let me give you an analogy. This is what's kind of amazing. Let's go back to the movie Titanic. Titanic, great movie. They built this ship. It was supposed to never be able to be sunk. It had 10 chambers in the bottom, and four of those chambers could be uh, flooded, and it could still float. But why did it sink? Because four chambers were flooded in the front, and the ship tipped, and there was no bulkheads, and so it went over to the fifth, the sixth, 
And as you remember in the movie Titanic, as uh, the guy that actually was the architect that built the Titanic was sitting at the mirror in the dining room, and Rose came to talk to her, him, and he said, Rose, get on a ship, or get on a lifeboat, because Titanic will sink. It's inevitable. I want you to take that analogy and remember it because you have 10 body systems just like the 10 chambers in the Titanic. When you have these body systems go down, you, when one goes down, it puts stress on the others. When two goes down, it puts more stress on the others. When three body systems start shutting down or go down because of whatever challenges, guess what? Disease starts to manifest. So what we want to do is understand these body systems, how to use the integrated use of essential oils in the application process to prevent <clears throat> the sinking of your Titanic. So understanding these body systems is very, very, very important. So let's go through them one at a time. Our first one is the circulatory system. It's a very, very important system. This is the one that a lot of times is referred to a lot in aromatherapy because they talk about how the oils will get in the body and circulate through the blood and how fast it goes and everything like that. It's great. There's nothing wrong with this. But look at how the essential oils work. It will work in the circulatory system simply through aromatherapy or through um, the English massage and touch. It's going to get into the circulatory system and go. Even through the French medical, it's going to get into the bloodstream and do the same thing. And it's carried throughout the entire body. Now, this circulatory system also includes, you know, the heart, the veins, the capillaries, the arteries, the thymus, the tonsils, the appendix, and the lymph nodes. These are just kind of some of the anatomy of the circulatory system. But this is not the real power here. The real power here is what these are connected to. And this is what I want you to focus on, guys. You see, the circulatory system is connected to or is in conjunction with the muscular system and the endocrine system. Now, I want you to really focus on this. And that's why we have this here highlighted on the PowerPoint. Because once you have all 10 body systems going on and you know that this one's connected to these here, if this one goes down, if the circulatory system goes down, guys, what does it put stress on? The muscular system and the endocrine system. Now, the picture should start becoming clear. If one system goes down, it puts stress on two other systems. Well, what's another system? The digestive system. It helps to break down your food and cause the absorption, helps to break down the essential oils and cause the absorption also. But how is it connected? What is it, what is it included with? And what is its common disorders? And, guys, what is it connected to in conjunction with? The digestive system is in conjunction with the muscular system and the urinary system. So again, you have one system that's connected directly to two. And if the digestive system goes down, it's going to affect which system? The muscular system. If the muscular system goes down, what is it connected to? Oh, now you're starting to see how it starts to domino effect. So let's move on down now to our next system, and this is the endocrine system. It's responsible for the secretion of hormones in your immune system and all that kind of stuff. You can see what is included, what organs are included in that system, and you can see the common disorders that system goes down. And guess what? It's in conjunction with the nervous system and the circulatory system. So guys, guess what? If we go back and we take a look at this, the circulatory system is in conjunction with the muscular system and the endocrine system. So if the circulatory system goes down, it's going to affect the endocrine system and the muscular system. And what other system? The nervous system. You've got three systems down, four systems actually gone down right there. Disease is going to manifest. A disorder is going to manifest. A challenge is going to manifest because that system has gone down. So what do we do? We take a look at the integrated use of essential oils. And we say, okay, the circulatory system is down. And so we got to boost the circulatory system. So we're going to do aromatherapy. 
We're going to do topical application. We're going to do ingestion. We're going to support that circulatory system the best way that we can. And the best way we can do that is make sure that we get things happening in a fast way. So let's look at the next one, the integumentary system. This is your skin. This is a very important part of your body. Regulates your uh, temperature. It also helps with, uh, you know, um, prevention of germs, water retention, all these cool things. Here's all the areas that include your body that, that the skin included with, and now common disorders. You know, th this is powerful. When you start putting this together, guys, it makes it so easy for you to use essential oils. What's it in conjunction with? Circulatory and muscular system. Yeah, you, you realize how many systems are in conjunction with the circulatory system or the muscular system? When you start seeing that, if you put extra stress on your skin, on the integumentary system, it's going to affect the muscular system, which is going to affect the circulatory system. The circulatory system is going to affect the endocrine system. The endocrine system is going to affect the nervous system. You see the domino effect that starts happening? And what happens is people just go through life not supporting their systems, their 10 body systems. And so when you start looking at the application of essential oils, you are supporting every single system. And you'll support it with the most direct method possible. If you're going to support the uh, integumentary system, yes, you could do oral, but you're better off to get right to location. Right to location. Yes, you can do oral along with it. It's just going to help because it's going to come through the blood and come from the inside out. But get it on the skin. Get it right on the skin. Well, let's look at the next body system. Amazing here, the muscular system. Powerful system. Here's your functions. and also includes your cardiac muscle, by the way, guys. Here's your common disorders. Now, what's it in conjunction with? Digestive and circulatory. So when there's stress put on the muscular system, the digestive system goes down. The circulatory system goes down. And now what are they in conjunction with? Going to the nervous system, guys, this and here should shake you up pretty good. Look at what it's in conjunction with. Every single system. So when you have stress hit your body, what's happened to your body systems? They are all under attack. Why do you think when you go through a bout of stress, you wind up sick? How many of you guys, think about this. How many of you just had, well, let's go back to tax day. <laughs> April 14th. Oh, you haven't got your taxes filed. Were you sick right after that? Yeah, absolutely. Because it affected every single system. And so I know I keep saying this, but I just wanted to get through so clearly. So by using the integrated approach, you don't have to come up to tax season, have the systems drop down, cold, flu, whatever, come to your body. You can prevent that by supporting those systems through the three different forms of application. Let's look at the respiratory system. Very powerful. Here again, directly connected to aromatherapy. I'm sorry, reproductive system, sorry. <clears throat> What are the common disorders? Muscular system and the endocrine system. The reproductive system is in challenge. There's the respiratory. Here we go. Delivers oxygen to the blood and removes carbon dioxide. Guess what else is attached to that red blood cell? Essential oil. Absolutely. What is it connected to? Muscular system and the circulatory system. So you can see how powerful connected our body is. It's not just an individual system, an island of its own. It's all connected, a unitary system. And what happens here affects here. And that is such power. So if stress here affects here, so then essential oils here will affect here. It, it, it's just the common law of nature because of the unitary system. Absolute power inside of this. So moving on to the skeletal system, look at what it's in conjunction with. The muscular system and the nervous system. The urinary system is in conjunction with the circulatory system and the endocrine system. And now you have all 10 
body systems all together in conjunction with each other. And when one goes down, it puts pressure on the next one and the next one and the next one. And when three are in failure, disease manifests. And what is disease? Dis-ease. So now, guys, I have a chart here that I produced many years ago. I love this chart. This will become a very powerful chart for you to refer to. It's kind of a flow chart in a, in a, uh, a way. And you just kind of go through the chart. First, you ask the question. If the question is yes, then you go to the oils that are suggested. If the answer is no, you go to the next question. And you repeat this process through all 12 questions. Just that simple. This is one of the most powerful charts that you will absolutely use when it comes to the application of essential oils. So let's drill in and kind of walk through this. So the first thing here is the indicator. What is the indicator? Ah, oh, I just don't feel good today. Well, is it nutritional? Yes, it's nutritional. Well, we need to look at liver cleanse, digest, orange, coriander, beef fit, copaiba. Those are some of the oils that research and time, when I say time, time tested for thousands of years has shown to be effective to help in the nutritional challenges. If the answer is no, it goes back over. Is it hyper or is it hypo? Is my thyroid up or my thyroid down? Kind of an aspect. You need to identify the system that's out of balance. Lavender lowers, peppermint raises, myrtle elevates, and myrtle lowers. Gives you just some quick aspects right there. Hormonal, if the answer is no. It goes over, and there again, if it's yes, guess what? We use the oils that have been indicated over time and over their chemical composition that have effect on the body hormonally. There they are for you. See how powerful this is? Moving on, physical is your next one. If it's yes, PAT, oh, physical aromatic touch. What's that? Well, guess what? It is a modality that we teach here at Be Young. Absolutely amazing. If it's no, is it emotional? PAT, EAT. Absolutely powerful. Well, it's neither physical or emotional, then is it toxins? Well, if it is, then here are the suggested oils that show that they have an effect on helping remove toxins from a toxic situation. Next question, if it's no, it's not toxins, is it bacterial? Then you have the suggested oils that have research showing that it is good for that challenge. If it's no, then we go to viral. If it's no, we go to fungal. And finally, if it's no, we go to parasitic. And so literally, guys, you just go down this list. You have the oils. You have the aspect there to look at. And the power is absolutely at your fingertips. No longer do you have to run around and hit your head against the wall, call up the neighbor, call up <clears throat> a palm reader to know which oil to use. The power now is within your hands. It's as simple as just one, two, three, four, basically. Go to the application chart and go through it. It's real simple. Two, which body system is in failure? Go through the 10 body systems. Which oil I should use? You'll either find on the application chart or go to our website. Go to the sharing center to resources and go to our natural standards site there and look at the power that you have at your fingertip to know which oil you should be using when dealing with a challenge. Because you've gone through the application chart, you know that it is a bacteria and a virus or it is a hormone and a parasite, you know exactly what to do. And if it's a parasite, which system is affected? Digestive system. Holy cow. And what is the digestive system in conjunction with? This system and this system. You see how power, the charts that you have at your fingertip right now, guys, gives you the power for application of essential oils like no one has ever had. I, I, I'm so excited and passionate about this because you literally can take care of your family without fear, without, oh, which oil, where do I put it, what do I do? You look at your application chart, decide where the challenge might be, you look at the system that that challenge might affect, and you select the oil that is indicated from the website or from the application chart, and what do you do? 
you go to the fastest method to get to the challenge. It's that simple. It's really not rocket science. It's just following a simple procedure that I have put together over the past 19 years. Guys, let me assure you, this is doable. This is powerful. This will work. I am not just someone sharing this with you. I am a product of this. I use it on a daily basis. My family uses it on a daily basis. And the application is simple. Once you understand these few simple little truths, it opens up a whole wonderful world in aromatherapy and essential oils. Don't limit yourself to only one train of thought. Bring yourself to the full understanding of the integrated use of aromatherapy. And by doing so, the power is within you to do great. Happy oilizing.